let's jump right into the leadoff. And let's talk about the two guys that are coming up with rosters expanding 228 in September for the last month of the season. Listen, for as bad as 2022 has been for this team, there's only 30 games left. Mercifully, there's only 30 games left. And then we can flip the page to 2023 and you know, kind of get into that hopeful feeling again with a hiring of a new GM and and the moves that they're going to make uh, or we expect them to make, I should say. Uh, so with the rosters expanding in September, 28 players now on the roster as opposed to 26. The Tigers are actually getting three faces uh, that are going to be fresh, let's call it, right? Michael Pineda has been activated off of the IL. Um, okay, great. Another arm, another starter. Not really going to throw too much uh, at him right now. He will make a start during this Kansas City Royal Series, which we'll talk about in the preview. But the two names that we really want to talk about, right? We want to talk about Spencer Torkelson, who there was question as to whether he would come back in September or not. And also Ryan Kreidler, who is going to be making his Major League debut. So in order to make room on the roster, the Tigers had to option Zach Short, which, okay, again, another eh thing, right? I, I would highly expect Zach Short to be off of the 40-man roster in the offseason to open up a 40-man spot and protect somebody against the Rule 5 draft. Zach Short. Listen, versatile infielder, light hitting, versatile infielder, which seems to be the profile of every single minor league player that Alavila accrued during this seven year rebuild to misery. Um, and so in order to maybe protect some of the higher upside guys, you got to get guys off the 40 man. And Zach Short is definitely going to be a candidate for that. Now, listen, I get it, right? The people in Toledo love him. Fantastic. He can be a fantastic AAA player, but he's not doing it at the major league level. Has he gotten a chance? No, not really. Has he deserved a chance? No, not really. So let's let's like not get too up in arms about Zach Short not being on the major league roster anymore. To clear another spot, Ronnie Garcia was transferred to the 60-day IL. So tomorrow night when the Tigers take the field against the Kansas City Royals, Spencer Torkelson is going to be at first per A.J. Hinch in his postgame uh, press conference. And Ryan Kreidler is going to be somewhere on the infield. Where is he going to be? Could potentially be second base because they don't have uh, a second baseman right now with scope on the IL. Could also be shortstop and maybe Javi plays second base. There's a thought potentially. Or could be spelling Jamer Candelario at third base because he does project to most likely be a third baseman. And here's some some deets on, on Kreidler, right? He's Detroit's number seven prospect overall. He's a fourth round draft pick in 2019 out of UCLA. He's a big guy, 6'4" with his scouting profile says a strong enough arm to play third base. That's not a bad thing. A shortstop converting to third base is not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, in Toledo this year, he did have two injuries. He had a, a broken hand early in the season, and then he had a growing issue when he came back from uh, that that broken hand. Uh, so in AAA, his numbers are not that great, right? He's slashing 213, 352, and 411. He has eight home runs and 22 RBIs, but he does have a 14.4% walk rate, which would be tops on the major league roster if that were to continue because these guys don't walk at all. However, he would fit in well with his K rate, which is almost 29% of the time. So another guy's going to swing and miss a lot. I would... Almost expect a very similar uh, debut to that of Kerry Carpenter's, where Kerry Carpenter came up and struggled, uh, especially I think he had six strikeouts in his first eight at-bats. Um, not the best start to a major league career, but he's since righted the ship and has been hitting the ball a little bit better. Uh, so expect a little bit of the same from Kreider. Uh, he does have a 107 weighted runs created, which if that were to translate to the major league level would be fantastic because that's above league average. 
I looked into on Fangraphs his three-year projections, which I think are important, right? We look at how the metrics kind of view this player for the Tigers. Um, he would be about a 15 home run per year guy. He, I think in three years it was like 15, 16, and 17, or 15, 15, and 16. So about a 15 home run guy. He will walk about 8% of the time, but still strike out about 28% of the time according to those projections. Now, projections aren't perfect, so let's not like go all in on this is the type of player. that He could surprise, but he could also disappoint, right? Uh, and he's going to be about a 1.6 war guy, which that's pretty valuable on a team that has negative war at this point. 1.6, almost a two war guy over three seasons. Uh, on average, on average, about a, a 1.6 over those three seasons would be would be a nice player, not a superstar. We're not talking about a, a, a Julio Rodriguez that we just saw in the Seattle series. It's a 3-4 a type war guy a year, but we're talking about a guy that's solid. We're talking about somebody that you is a piece, right? It's not somebody that's going to light the world on fire, but is um, a piece. The other guy that's going to come up is somebody that we know well, and that's Torkelson. We know about his struggles. We know that he, you know, hit sub 200 and had probably too many at bats and should have gone down earlier in the year. But alas, he did not. He played 92 games in, well, he was a part of 92 games in the major leagues before he was demoted at the All Star break. But in AAA, though he got off to a rough start, still turned it around a little bit. And you kind of heard him talking if you watched the broadcast today. It was a lot of, you know, trial and error, trying to get back to the keys that that made him, what Scout said, the best bat of a decade in college. He says that he's found that he's feeling much more comfortable, so hopefully that will translate as he gets into uh, the lineup to tomorrow night in Kansas City. It, his stats in AAA, again, not eye-popping. Uh, slash line of 229, 348, 340, uh, 389. He did walk about 15% of the time, which was up from his uh, major league rate, but he also struck out about 26.5% of the time. So, you know, again, still swinging a bat with some holes in it uh, and was right at about league average for weighted runs created. So hopefully, you know, that um, could, could translate. Hopefully, you know, you see a little bit of that turnaround but I want to hear your thoughts on this, right? In the comments, wherever you're watching from, let me know. What do you expect out of Torkelson? What do you expect out of Kreidler in these last 30 games? Because here's the deal, right? The three-year projections for these guys, for Kreidler, it projects to be a solid baseball player, right? Like a peace player. For Torkelson, though, it projects still pretty kindly to him. He still projects as a three to four war player per year. You know, at the beginning of the season, they had him. Um, at the beginning of the season, they had him projected at like 28 home runs this year. Now, listen, there's not a single Tiger that's going to get to 28 home runs this year. Uh, so those projections were clearly, clearly off. But yet, the projections are still got Torkelson at a uh, a third uh, a a three to four war player. Tony Drew says that he doesn't expect anything out of Torkelson. Uh, he thinks that the Tigers ruined him, and there's definitely some truth to that. There seems to be a broken nature to the way that the Tigers um, have have gone about their hitting approach this season. You know, you get the reports out of Atlanta that Grossman, they brought him in and showed him what was wrong with his swing, and he started to hit the ball. Now, listen, he didn't light the world on fire. So let's, again, temper expectations and temper analysis for Robbie Grossman. Again, they fixed the swing, apparently, but he's not lighting the world on fire, still a role player for them. But it does speak a little bit to the broken nature of, you know, the – the approach the Tigers have uh, for Kreider, Tony says he may take scoop uh, scope out of the lineup at second base, but you expect him to be up for a coffee, a cup of coffee in September. And that's it. You know, that's, there's definitely some uh, truth to that. There's definitely some reality to that, Tony, that could only be a cup of coffee, but we'll see because he, um, 
was very comfortable playing with Riley Green and Spencer Torkelson in the minor leagues. And and hopefully those guys can ri- rub off on each other a little bit and get comfortable playing with each other in the major league uh, system, in the major league uh, uniform. And and maybe he can surprise. I, I, I don't want to con- completely be pessimistic, though they've given us a lot of reason to be pessimistic this season, right? Uh, it, you came into the, the season very hopeful, and by May, those hopes were diminished. They were gone. They were destroyed. Whatever adjective you want to use to explain the negative feeling you have, that's what those feelings are. Uh, and so it's going to be interesting. They have 30 games. Here's what I would do if I were uh, running the ball club. And I'm not, but you know, maybe someone like me, should have a say. I don't know. You can you can debate that in the comments if you want to. But anybody who is prospect or just came off of the prospect, you know, status, I would give those guys as much run as possible over the next 30 games. I would have Kreidler in the lineup at least 26 times. I'd have Torkelson in the lineup at least 26 times. I'd see what I could get out of Willie uh, Castro. I'd see, you know, we kind of know with Willie because he's been up the whole year. But the future has to kind of be now. What do you have with these guys? I'd almost let Clemens play too. Put out a lineup out there of of Torgelson at first base, Clemens at second base, Kreidler at third base, and Javi at shortstop. What's your infield look like next year? You know, these guys have gotten at bats. Let's Let's see what, you know, they have over these last 30 games. And, you know, they might need an off day here or there or something like that. But I would give them as much run as possible. Before uh, we get to our next segment, I do want to highlight Paul Robinson. Paul, I do want to say what's up because I know you've been a friend of the show in uh, the past and other shows that we have here on DSN. But he says, I wouldn't condemn them, but you have little hopes that they're going to light this team on fire in 30 days. Yeah, they're, you know, they're going to. They're not going to set the, like neither of them are going to win rookie of the year in 30, 30 games because one, they're not eligible for it. But you don't have high expectations, right? But you do want to see improvement, right? And that's what we've talked about continuously on the corner is over these next few weeks, over these last 30 games, you want to see improvement. And that's going to really set expectations for what 2023 can be. Maybe the best silver lining and maybe the greatest gift that the Detroit Tigers gave us this season is the ability to go, wait a second, for 2023. The ability to go, "Mm, maybe we shouldn't expect too much and maybe we can just tap the brakes and let them surprise us. Because this year was the opposite, right? It was like 500 or bust, potential wild card. Oh my goodness, this team is a dumpster fire. So maybe going into 2023, now we can be like, yeah, we'll see what happens. I don't expect much. And low expectations are a good place to be. Because if you have low expectations, it's hard to be disappointed. Let me get to uh, some more comments here. Uh, so Cody says, yes. And I think that he's Cody on Facebook says, yes, you know, uh, Carpenter too, right. He wants to see Carpenter get run. I agree hundred percent. Like I I've said this, I've tweeted it. I will continue to say it. I've seen enough of Akil Badu. We know like 2022 for Akil Badu is a complete wash. He's had every opportunity 26 out of the last 30 games, put Kerry Carpenter in left field, not DH. Let him get into the flow of the game. No more Akil Badu for the rest of the season for crying out loud. He can be speed off the bench. That's all I care about. I don't care about anything else other than seeing these guys who spent most of the season in AAA getting some run at the team, getting some run on uh, the major league field. Cody? You say the next year will be better. I hope so, man. I I really hope so. I really hope that it's better because it can't be worse. Seven doggone years into this thing. Seven doggone years into this thing, and we're no better than 
2015 when Al took over. Thankfully, Al is no longer running the team, and hopefully somebody will get there. Paul says, I'd bench Miggy, Scope, Badu, and Baez. <laughs> That's going to be a tough one, man, and see what the youngsters can do. I I understand, you know, we're, we'll talk about some statistics with Baez, and we're definitely going to talk about Miggy later on in the show. But benching Baez is going to be a very, very, very tall task. Uh, the amount of money and just his first year. Listen, for the struggles that Baez has had, I'm not making an excuse because, I mean, sliders out of the hand for this guy, he's swinging, and there's been no adjustments made. But was it uh, Cody's? Straverhagen from The Athletic was talking about his strikeout rate actually being down, but his ground ball percentage is actually way up. And if you can even believe that his strikeout percentage is down, I was shocked, absolutely shocked. Um, we knew the profile. We knew that he was a free swinger, didn't realize how much of a free swinger and so it's going to be interesting. Can you send a message to a guy like that? I really don't know. And I don't even know if benching him would be a uh, would be worth it because who's going to play shortstop? Willie Castro has, has shown that he struggled at it. Kreider projects more as a – Kreidler projects more as a third baseman than a shortstop. Um, Harold doesn't really have the mobility. Clemens is not a shortstop. So, like, the shortstop position is really Javi Baez's until they potentially sign somebody in the offseason. We'll see if they get to that point. We'll see if they do that. I'm not entirely sure that they will. But it's still going to be interesting to see what they do. Uh, yeah, this is, this is, Cody, like, you and I are in lockstep on this one. And the reason why is if you sign somebody like a Correa who could potentially opt out. Again, this is not, I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. But I've said from the beginning of the season that Javi Baez is his best when he's not the face of a franchise. He had Bryant and Rizzo in Chicago, he had Lindor in New York, and he was better. I'm not saying that he's not a leader, and I know firsthand from a source that I have that he is a very highly respected man in that in that clubhouse, that he is friendly with everybody, that he is the nicest guy and is actually really good for their clubhouse culture. And I was also told from that same person that there's nobody that outworks Javi Baez. It hasn't translated this year, but that gives me hope for Baez to uh, a certain a certain extent. But bringing in a bigger name shortstop, which they kind of missed the boat on last free agency with the names that were out there, or somebody that could take over that face of the franchise role from Javi would actually benefit Javi. And I and that's my story, and I will 100% stick to it.